Hey, this is Jeff Nelson. I'm a realtor here in Lower Alabama. Um, for the most part, Baldwin County. I take care of all of Baldwin County from Bay Minette all the way down to the beach. And uh, going to be doing a series of, of a bunch of videos about selling your home instead of buying your home. And there's such a big topic and there's so much to cover um, that I'm going to, it's probably going to take quite a few videos. So please hit subscribe and uh, you'll be notified when I have a new video coming out. I do them, I've been doing them daily here lately. So there's, there's a lot of information I'm pumping out. So let's get right down to it. Um, I, today I'm just going to hit on, there are four major factors that are major con contributors um, to selling your home. You could narrow it all down to these four things and that is price, condition, presentation, and location. Um, so far as price goes, this is the number one thing. If, you're, if your home is overpriced, it's just going to sit on the market and it'll go stale. Um, there, I'm going to do a whole video just on pricing alone, but um, I'm, I just want to hit some brief points about pricing. Um, you know, it's been said, and you may have heard it yourself, that your house is worth what a buyer is willing to pay for it. And that, that is pretty much the case. So, um, and buyers are savvy nowadays. I mean, they, they can get online and find out a lot of information just on their own. And, I, and I'll tell you, if, if their agent is worth their weight, um, their agent is not going to let their buyer, and if the agent knows what they're doing, so far as running comps and all that, um, they're not going to let their buyer pay more than what they should. Um, because when it really comes down to it, me as a listing agent, I'm looking out for the best interests of my seller. And if I instruct you on um, or agree to a price that I know it's not going to sell, I'm not looking out for your best interest because everybody's going to get frustrated. The seller's going to get frustrated. I'm going to get frustrated. The buyers are going to get frustrated when a house is way overpriced. Um, just recently, last week, as a matter of fact, I had an old uh, past client uh, call me and he wanted to sell his house only if he could get this number. Now, the number he gave me was a lot. I'm not going to divulge the number. <laughs> it was a lot more than what it was worth. Not just a little bit, a lot. And I, I told him flat out, um, as a listing agent, I am not that person. I am not that agent who's going to just tell you everything you want to hear because it's just waste everybody's time. It just, it just does. So I'm going to, I'm going to tell it straight. I'm a straight shooter and I'm going to say, this is what it's worth. This is what you should expect. Um, should you go in a little over what I think? Yeah, that's possible. It just depends on the market. Uh, we happen to be in a market now where um, there's very low inventory. Of course, that changes all the time. So you might be watching this video a year from now or two years from now or 10 years from now, and we could be in a different market. But just remember, it all comes down to price. Every home's gonna sell at the right price, if that makes sense. So, okay, let's go into number two, condition. Okay, so let's go into the second biggest factor that comes into play when selling your home, and that's the condition of your home. So if it's priced right, um, we got to look at the condition because um, I think most people would want to have their home presented well and be in good condition when they're, they're potentially, well, when they're trying to sell to potential new buyers. And so, and, and it, what I try to educate sellers all the time is you got to think like a buyer because a buyer is the number one question when it comes to condition of a house that they're looking at. The number one question in that buyer's mind is how much do I have to do to get this house to a point where I'm going to like it? You know, or am I going to have to replace the carpet? Am I going to have to put new windows in? Am I going to have to change out the faucets? Am I going to have to paint? You know, um, obviously the less the buyer, now that I'm just giving you as a seller, I'm giving you the psychology of a buyer and you need to think about that. Um, if the buyer, obviously, if they have less to do, the better, right? And think about yourself. If you're selling your home, you're going to be buying a home 
you're not going to live on the street. So, I mean, you're going to be buying a home yourself and you're going to be thinking the same thing, whether it's consciously or subconsciously, you're going to be thinking, man, I really like this house, but the yard's a wreck, you know, and I'm going to have to put up a fence or, or whatever versus finding a house that you have to do hardly anything to, you know, it's just move in ready and everything's been updated and that type of thing. So when, when you're thinking about the condition of your property, you need to think about uh, three different things that you could do to improve the condition of your house. That's refresh it, repair it, or replace it, replace things in your home. So refreshing could just be, it is amazing what a good coat of paint could do, even to one bedroom. Or just go through with trim paint and just touch up, you know, some of the trim where maybe a dog or piece of furniture had hit it or something like that. Um, buyers are going to be, they're going to be zeroing in on every little detail as they're walking through your home for sale. So um, it's amazing a gallon of, gallon of paint and a few hours on a Saturday afternoon can do to help improve the condition of your house. Repairs, repairs and replacement. Um, and there, I could do a whole new video on this one too, and I probably will. But um, I often suggest, depending on you know my observation of the property, I often suggest even do a pre-home inspection because the buyer is going to get a home inspection anyway. And a lot of times sellers are surprised because they were totally unaware of things that needed to be repaired or replaced. Like for instance, if they haven't been in the attic for in forever. Uh, they might not know that there's that there's been a, a leak, and you know some of the wood has rotted out. They might not even know that. Um, air filter, you know, air filter in the attic. Sometimes, you know, you just forget about things like that, or you know, just there's a ton of things. <coughs> Excuse me. So a lot of times, a home inspection, you know, especially if you have a home that's ten or more years old or even younger. Uh, you know, a pre-home inspection before you even get a buyer is a good is a good way. I know you're you're putting out a few hundred dollars to have this done, but you're not going to be surprised when a buyer just loads you up with all these things that they want repaired or replaced. So um, I suggest going through refreshing, and refreshing also is not necessarily meaning buying stuff for your home like paint. You might be okay on paint but it also means decluttering and getting rid of things and making your house look bigger um, and then repair anything just walk through your house and chances are inside the house you probably know what's working if a light fixture isn't working if a socket is not working or um, if a, if you have a drippy faucet or a drippy toilet, a leaking toilet. I mean, you, you know these things. So it's good to just give the buyer less to think about this negative. So get the condition up. That's going to be, you got price, condition of your home. Get those two things going good. You're, you'll be in good shape so far as getting your house sold in a timely fashion. All right, so the, the third thing, the third biggest factor is presentation. So, you know, if you've got your house priced right and you've repaired everything that you can think of and you got it looking nice, it's about presentation. And that comes down to staging, um, photography, and marketing. And of course, the marketing um, has less to do with you and more to do with your agent. And so, you picking the right agent who's going to market your house well is, is the key to that one. So um, as far as staging, I kind of leaked into this on, on a little bit on the condition part of this video. And, uh, but presentation and staging is key. How many times have you been into somebody's house or you were looking for a house to buy yourself and it just, you just felt overwhelmed by how much stuff was in there and you, you were thinking, God, it's going to take them forever you know, to, to move. I mean, you, they might need two months to get all this stuff out. And so um, a lot of people like a lot of things, you know, but, but we talked a little bit about already about decluttering. So you can do that. You can get rid of things. The buyer wants to see themselves in your house. They don't want to be sidetracked by 
all of your hobbies or collectibles or your deer heads or trophies on the wall, certificates, that type of thing. You want to depersonalize the best, the most that you can in order to show your home. So staging it, that decluttering it and depersonalizing your property is, is a big factor, okay? Also, it's going to make each room feel bigger and bigger is always better so far as, you know, square footage. You could, a smaller room or a smaller house could actually feel bigger just by rearranging the furniture or even taking a one chair out or taking a, a coffee table out or anything like that just to, to make the flow, make it flow better through the living room into the kitchen, for instance. But there's a lot of things that you, uh, people can do, just get things out of the house to make it flow better and to feel bigger. So staging is a big part of photography. Now, um, I suggest you know using a professional photographer. Um, if, if mine's busy, I can do it myself, but you know I use a really good camera and um, I've done it a, a lot. And so, but having nice, crisp, bright pictures is really key. I can't tell you, even in today's world, where we have these great iPhones and great cameras at our fingertips, uh, where I still see pictures on the MLS that are dark, you can barely see the room, I mean, they're just, they're out of focus, I mean, it's just horrible. So, for having good photography is, is key in presenting your home well. And um, I also suggest having as many photos that are possible that, you're, that the MLS will allow you to have up. I think in ours it's like 48 pictures. So if, if the house is, if it's kind of small, it might be kind of hard to put out 48 pictures, but um, you know, buyers love it. They love going through pictures of, of a house that they're potentially going to spend, you know, three or 400,000 or more on. And so having great pictures and a lot of them is something that you want to instruct your agent. Hopefully if you're in lower Alabama, it'll be me and you won't have to instruct me because I'll do it anyway. But um, photography, uh, so far as still pictures. Now, if you're watching this video, you already know if you've been to my channel, you know, I, I do a lot with videos. So I, if I have a listing, I'm gonna do a video on the listing. If the, of course, all of this is if the seller allows me to, and they always do. So I'll do that and put it on YouTube and have it on my website, which is one of the biggest in the area, my website is. And um, it's gonna get a lot of traction. So I do a lot of video, I do a lot of photography, but um, if, if you're using somebody else, Lord forbid, if you're in this area and you don't call me after watching me, um, but have your agent do these things. Have your agent do these things photography people this is a world where people are on their phones they're going online and they're looking at places to buy and they're going through and they're swiping through all these pictures and and if you have great pictures you're going to attract people all right and marketing if if your home isn't being marketed well then it, it's not going to be seen so it's important to have a really good detailed description of your of the property. So your agent needs to be take the time and write up a lot of detail. Again, buyers are wanting as much information as possible. Um, I remember, you know, I've been a realtor since 2004, and it's you know that's a long time. And back back in those days, I mean, it was nothing for you know to me show 20, 25, 30 homes. I remember one couple I showed over 80 homes to before they make a decision, made a decision. But nowadays, I'm seeing that number decrease a lot because a lot of times buyers can make decisions based on information that they can already see online. Um, you know through pictures and the description and the detail that you can find online nowadays. So um, having the best detail of the house written in the description and as much as, as possible, yeah, as much as they allow you to write in there in the MLS, um, write up as much detail about that property as possible and then market it. I mean, we, we live in a world today where, as you know, 
um, it's at our fingertips. And so the more places that I can, that I can promote your property, which is a ton of them, um, I'm going to do it. So, um, plus personally speaking, um, I have a website that shows up a lot, uh, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pages that show up on the first page of Google. So I, I've already got a very strong web presence, social media presence and YouTube presence. So, um, all right, that's presentation. Now we're on to location. All right, so location. Now we can't really do anything about where our house is physically located because you already bought it. Now you want to sell it. So if you have a big radio tower in your backyard, you knew that going into it. So you're going to have to deal with that. Um, however, you can always talk about your location in general, the, the general vicinity, what's around you. You, you know, if, if you don't, if you're not in the greatest location directly in your neighborhood or, um, if your house, if, if your yard backs up to a plant, like a manufacturing plant or a cemetery, you know, that might not be as desirable, but what you can do is you can talk about location so far as what's close by, shopping, parks, how far are you, in our case, how far are you away from the beach? You know, how far are you away from the, what's, where's the closest grocery store and gas station? You can bring up things like that so far as location and you can, um, that, that's effective marketing of being able to highlight different areas in your location or your surrounding area. Now, if you happen to be in a good neighborhood, in great neighborhood, talk about the amenities of the neighborhood or the structure of the neighborhood. You know, if, if you're, um, if you have, like I just did a video on Jubilee Farms and it has great pool, two great pools in there. So we, you know, talk about those things. Um, Timber Creek, you know, you got tennis courts and basketball courts, Stone Bridge, same thing. You got these great amenities. So there's all kinds of things that you can talk about your surrounding location if you're not able to talk about the actual physical lot. Now, if you happen to have a great lot, maybe you're in a cul-de-sac and you have a larger than normal lot or it backs up to woods, obviously those are going to be premium or if it's on a lake, you know, that type of thing is going to be a premium lot. And you can obviously talk about those things too that will build up. So price, condition, presentation, and location. Those are the four major things that come into play in selling your home. So if you are thinking about selling your home in Lower Alabama and Baldwin County, give me a call. I know what I'm doing. I can take a lot of stress off your shoulders and get your home sold. And I will shoot straight with you. Hey, I will give you the facts. I don't blow smoke. Um, and I, I will do my best to sell your home at the right price in a timely fashion. So give me a call and hope you enjoyed it and look for more videos to come. We'll talk to you soon.